I have spent now a year and a half thinking about this. Latex skins. Artificial skins that don't come from an animal but from a tree. Skins that are made of natural liquid latex. An idea that's been quietly consuming me. I have been obsessed with translucent leather for a while. I love how it feels like leather but looks more like skin. There's something haunting and beautiful in that ambiguity. But I also love reptilian textures. I'm drawn to scales, the patterns, the subtle shapes of nature. But is there anything existing as translucent reptile leather yet, besides actual shattered snake skin? And if not, could it be made? Is there a way to create this idea from scratch? Could liquid latex be shaped, patterned and transformed into something that feels like reptilian skin without ever coming from a living creature? As you may have noticed, my creative process often begins with a question. A quiet, what if? What if I could reimagine and deconstruct something that exists in nature, but express it through an entirely different material language? What would emerge from that tension between the organic and the artificial? Could I recreate reptile skins by translating its essence into a new form? And if so, how might that vision manifest as a variable design? How would it feel, move and transform to the body? In this video I'm going to take you back in time, back to when I started making those skins, walking through my working process, challenges, obstacles, new learnings and discoveries along the way. I have developed a technique that allows me to mold reptilian patterns layer by layer into these latex skins. It's been a process of deep experimentation, countless hours spent testing different layerings, thicknesses, techniques and molds. Through this I have engineered variations of latex skins. Some elastic and thin, others more stable and structured each with a purpose. Why? Because I wanted to go beyond material exploration and actually creating wearable garments from these skins. With a background in fashion design, my practice has evolved more and more from designing garments to also creating the fabrics for it. Something that felt so empowering and actually gave me a lot more freedom and possibilities. As a next step, I constructed my patterns based on my design ideas. I wanted to create a few pieces only and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. So I focus on creating a long dress, a skirt, coats for each man and woman and a men's top. Beyond creating the latex sheets itself, I also began experimenting with 3D padding as a design detail, developing a method to make these elements truly three-dimensional rather than just flat cutouts, was a process all on its own. Each padded form is carefully sandwiched between two layers of latex through a meticulous and time-consuming method that involves cutting, prepping, precisely positioning and bonding each one into place. It is quite labor-intensive, but it adds a sculptural depth to the material that I find incredibly rewarding. As part of Learning all of this on my own, from creating the latex skins to shaping them into garments, I also had to learn how to bond the latex pieces together. Basically, I had to unlearn much of what I've known from traditional garment making and how I used to create garments traditionally by sewing machine. Instead now, and finally, I could glue pieces together embracing a whole new method. 
something I'd never learned as part of my own formal fashion studies, unfortunately. To be honest, bonding latex pieces together is quite fiddly, I would say. I'm sure this is also partly because I create the latex skins myself instead of using pre-manufactured latex sheets by the meter. I had to learn how to properly prepare the surface before applying the glue, how to control the amount of adhesive and how to mark out seam allowances, especially important because the skins are quite transparent and uneven bonds would be immediately visible here. The process was slow, especially in my first pieces. But then it got easier, as I had a process to follow. But back to why I created this collection in the first place. And also, <laughs> this is probably the most personal video I have ever released. The time you see me working here, I was living in Asia, specifically Beijing where I lived and worked for many years, but decided it was time for a big change and planned to relocate back to Germany in the summer 2024, together with my husband. Also, for the last eight years, I was teaching fashion and textile design at a private design academy leading the entire course, overseeing portfolio building and also successfully bringing many, many students into renowned fashion colleges at the UK. Speaking of St. St. Martins, London College of Fashion, etc. And don't get me wrong, while I love teaching, it left me with very little time to my own projects and I craved more time to focus on my own practice again. I also wanted to do so back in Europe. I felt this pull to move, an unseen pull, even though this meant stepping into the unknown again. Whilst teaching, I got to spend only three days, including the weekends, on my practice. Besides this being totally exhausting over long periods of time, I wanted time to expand my practice and my creativity. I therefore decided to quit my job and prepared my move back to Germany. All of that was going on simultaneously behind the scenes here. It doesn't look like it, but it was a chaos. Half-packed boxes scattered around in the apartment ready to be shipped and also working until the very last minute before actually leaving the country. But before moving, I wanted to end my time in Asia on a strong note. I wanted to have created something that I can actually be really proud of. A project, a finished project. Something that I can take with me to build on in the future. So short on time and in between packing up my entire life in boxes, I gave myself a little bit over two months to work on this collection. Anyways, that's all I had left, so I had to make it work. So it is the end of June 2024 and here we are. Countless hours of working have come to an end. It felt surreal seeing these pieces existing now. Just two months ago, this came in form of a liquid 
from a bottle, besides the pads, of course. But it wasn't enough to just have finished the collection. I also needed to make sure it is photographed in the right setting. And while still being in Asia, I had to make use of that. So I got together with my husband, who is an amazing photographer. We asked friends of ours to model and we all flew to Hong Kong for the shooting. But not just any location in Hong Kong. We went to a completely different side of it. I have scoured satellite images before to find the best locations around Hong Kong and I found this wetland area on one of the islands which was just the perfect setting, really out of this world. It encapsulates all of my favorite elements all in one. <laughs> Mud, water, rocks, sand and the perfect moody sky for the perfect mysterious ambient setting. The results of this work are here. These are images that really embody my creative vision of ethereal latex structures in form of a garment that becomes an artifact itself. My current exploration centers around latex, a material often overlooked in its natural origin. I question and challenge its common associations, seeking to reframe latex as a natural living substance provided by the earth. I love exploring how natural material can be transformed into variable pieces, biofabricated, variable, natural ecosystems from the earth to the body. Also, a quick shout out to Lila Tex. Their liquid latex has become a staple in my process. It's beautifully smooth, applies effortlessly and comes in a variety of thicknesses, which makes it perfect for detailed material experimentation. Plus, it's completely free from harsh chemicals, something that I really value. Fast forward and we are in Germany already. We are, in fact, in my garage, which I rented out on purpose to actually store all of my belongings in there that would soon arrive by ship. In the meantime, and before they arrive, I get to use the space as it is, raw and empty, which gives me plenty of opportunities to set up my collection in it, to document, install and create from it, work with it. Especially when that means I get to use my fork machine to create a misty ambience, to capture my hanging latex skins in an especially haunting atmosphere. Something I love to do. All of this gave me time to engage with my creations, reflect on it and seeing it in new eyes in a new setting. It gave me the possibility to see it now after three months since creating these and to observe how they behave, to observe how the latex slightly aged and darkened in color while still being transparent. It was a time of just having arrived in Germany again and still being in a state of transition with an unclear path in front of me. The best thing to do in these situations, just wear your own creations and feel great. Embrace the unknown, take the path less traveled of not knowing yet where to even go to next, where to settle, where to set up a new base, a new studio, a new life. It's a path of transformation for me. It is not comfortable. It's quite unpredictable. It does not come with any guarantee. It is beyond familiar. 
Sometimes it is filled with just doubting everything. One day fearful, the next day being back to fully believing, an endless struggle. So one of my favorite things to do in the meantime as well was to get into my own garments, to wear them, to get a feeling for it. As this video shows, and to be honest, it shows really only a few snippets. It's almost more like an, like an overview, like a, like a summary. I have so much more, countless hours of footage of this journey, of my creative process, step by step. And I am thinking to use this platform to show more of my creative process and the documentary of it. And from this video onwards, I will slowly release more videos here, like creation videos, where I'm showing my process, my inspiration, my path. And if that's something that interests you, you can join me here.